So in my uh, previous video, I discussed um, some background about why we all should save materials and reuse them instead of throwing them away. Specifically talking about building materials, uh, that is deconstructing houses. But <clears throat> we also clean out garages, barns, attics, whatever. Um, and there's a lot of contents that often doesn't get get saved because um, people don't know what to do with it. They're under a deadline. Uh, they call somebody up. That person or company comes and dumpsters a lot of stuff that could be reused, but it's not economical to save it at that time. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we do when we do clean outs is we analyze all of the material we're taking. We, we recycle the stuff that needs to be recycled, say scrap metal, we take scrap wood that doesn't have paint and and we cut it into wood stove length and use it for fuel. We save all the things that can be reused, whether it's window blinds or couches or chairs. Uh, we donate some things. We sell out of our store, of course, when we can to make some money back. But what we do is we assess the value of all that material that we um, take and we take 20% of what our estimate is of the retail value and we discount that off the labor cost because it does cost a lot of money to handle this stuff. You have to go into a house, you have to have, a, you have, to have staff, you have to have a truck, you have to have dollies, you have to have insurance and we all know insurance is expensive, don't we? Um, we've got to uh, uh, have overhead like a warehouse and we have equipment and tools and all that stuff employee wages so we do is you give we give 20 percent discount on the value of the materials the other 80 percent of that value covers all that overhead and uh someday we may even make a profit <clears throat> um so the point is that um there's a lot of ways to recover materials and there's the more environmentally sound way and sometimes it costs a little bit more and you have to make a decision well do i want this guy to save all this stuff or just heap it onto the curb and hope someone comes by before it rains or the garbage guy crushes it up and throws it away and it gets burned in an incinerator when it's perfectly reusable. Meanwhile, we'll go out and buy something new that we just imported from, uh, you know, Indonesia. We're trying to get away from that, as I said in the last video. <clears throat> um, anyway, so the other thing that I wanted to bring up at this point is there's there's impediments besides just the cost of doing a clean out or sometimes it's just less expensive to demolish a house for various reasons than it is to take it apart. Should this be subsidized? Perhaps because the long term uh, savings environmentally and economic and resource wise and everything else says there should be a closed loop so that even in this case where uh, let's say it's ten thousand dollars to crunch the house up with a track hoe, throw it into a dumpster, throw it into a landfill, uh, to do, to take it all apart, save everything, take the nails out and reuse that material and make it into something costs a thousand dollars more. All right. So for the thousand dollar difference, you would get all this material from a house, uh, 30 or 40 tons, whatever it is of material that you could reuse. And you employ four or six times as many people to do that. The demolition's quicker, it's $1,000 cheaper. So for that $1,000 that somebody saves, the homeowner ostensibly, or the municipality or the government agency, whatever, um, <clears throat> that $1,000 that they save, you've just took 40 tons of reusable material that might be worth $20,000 and thrown it away. Well, the problem is it costs me $1,000 more to save it all. Right. So we're going to throw it out because we're looking at the bottom line budget for this particular job. The role of government is supposed to be we look at the big picture um, and we can afford to cushion that thousand dollar loss um, by having incentives like, guess what? We're going to charge you if you throw your house away instead of save it, uh, we're going to have a fee. So that discourages demolition. Because we shouldn't be doing it. And the, maybe the individual homeowner can't afford it. But collectively, if we're looking at the big environmental picture, right, uh, carbon output, uh, saving trees, minimizing landfill, uh, not burning it and, you know, uh, contaminating the air, whatever the issues are, we could take that 
thousand dollar difference compensate it for that particular job <clears throat> it's called an externality right you look at the external cost not just the cost for that particular job you look at the big picture environmental costs this is this is what we uh, this is part of what we call sustainability uh, that is the system can perpetuate itself we're not we're not we're not lemmings going over a cliff which they never did by the way we know that now um, <clears throat> but we um, want to make a closed loop we want to take that waste and reuse it it's more expensive to do it why because we're not looking at all the real costs this is the problem so uh, another specific impediment to that is the regulations do not support uh, at this time uh, deconstruction at least they don't here in some other places they do do we want to make that change yes is the state and municipalities and other people working to change that yes in fact they are um, that's why we have a project in the town of Hampton coming up where we're going to, uh, as a model, uh, deconstruct a number of houses and look at the costs, look at the savings, look at the jobs created and say, well, <clears throat> this maybe is a good thing to do in the future as the cost of materials goes up, the cost of fuel goes up. So transporting all that waste to Ohio by train is going to get more expensive, right? Uh, that doesn't mean we don't demolish things. Uh, in fact, the project I'm doing in Hamden we're going to have a demolition contractor who's going to take care of the abatement because there's hazardous materials such as asbestos. Hmm, how come they didn't know it was hazardous when they were installing it in every house? Whatever. So we're, we're going to have him do the abatement, him or her, as the case may be. The, they're going to abate and they're going to take care of the foundation needs and they're going to work on a disassembly of some parts. Uh, some parts are going to be saved, some aren't. They're going to work in conjunction with the deconstructionists, which we call ourselves. Um, it's all part of the same thing. So the thing is, the demolition people get work. Uh, we get work not only at the job site saving these materials, but we get all those materials, and now we sell them. So that makes more money. But And then they get made into something uh, uh, a woodworking shop down the street can buy, say, all the uh, yellow pine, circa 1900 yellow pine, and make uh, tabletops out of it or whatever. Or use we could use it as flooring in another house. And uh, guess what? It's better quality. You want to go buy engineered flooring with that little thin veneer so if you chip it, it's not permanently unfixable? You know, all that kind of stuff. W we can get better products, better materials, and... Does it come from China? No. Does it come from Chile or something? No, it comes from Hamden, Connecticut. And where can it be used? Hamden, Connecticut. So think about that. We just saved all that petroleum not shipping it 550 miles or from some manufacturing plant, right? It, it came from Hamden. It's going back to Hamden. Um, all of these factors need to be considered. So the reason why I'm doing this is because um, it needs to we need to change and it requires everyone to participate not just some bureaucrat on uh, <clears throat> up in the capital making a decision for us that's not how it works well we could try to do it that way but guess what happens they can make decisions that maybe suit themselves and not us because we are them or they are us or whatever you want to say uh, if we want to be democratic we all need to take action and change our behavior which sometimes means sacrificing that's right you may have to pay a little bit more for the flooring that's local um, in the long term, who benefits? You or maybe your kids. Okay. So you get the picture. Um, it's a bigger picture here. I'm not trying to be a, a, a hardcore salesman here and say, you need to buy my products because um, I need to repaint my uh, Mercedes and my boat needs maintenance and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any of that. Um, but I do have a lot of overhead. Um, so uh, buy some stuff, would you? For crying out loud, buy some stuff. Use stuff, not new stuff, if you haven't figured that out yet. Got to shut this thing off, don't I?